Hello everyone, this is your tutor AB and today we're going to be solving a question from the May 2019 IB Physics examinations. This is a paper 2 HL question and it's open-ended. This relates to the chapter D1, Gravitation. So let's get started. The moon Phobos moves around the planet Mars in a circular orbit. Outline the origin of the force that acts on Phobos. Now let's visualize this situation. You have a mass, which is Mars in this case, Mars, and you have a moon, which is orbiting Mars, meaning it's in circular motion around Mars. Actually, this moon should be going in a straight line, but it's not. Why? It has a tangential velocity. The only reason it's kept in orbit of Mars is due to some pull of Mars, some gravitational force that's keeping it seeking to the center. This is called a centripetal force. The centripetal force causes the moon to go in circles around Mars, keep it in orbit around Mars. And this centripetal force is attractive and is called the gravitational pull of Mars or the gravitational force of Mars. So that's your answer the gravitational force due to Mars. That is the only reason why this moon Phobos is not moving in a straight line. Outline why this force does no work on Phobos. Now, I want you to recall what is the equation for work. It's in your data booklet, but I'll also give it to you. It is work is equal to Fs times cos theta, where F is the force, S is the displacement, and cos theta is the angle at which the force acts. So, there is some force, there is some displacement, but yet still work is equal to zero. Why? Well, the force due to Mars, the gravitational force, always acts perpendicular to the moon, always acts 90 degrees to the moon. If we can see, it acts straight, 90 degrees. And for this reason, cos theta is actually cos 90. And by using a unit circle or the calculator, we know cos 90 is actually equal to zero. Cos 90 is equal to zero. So putting that all into our equation, Fs zero, we get that work is equal to zero. In summary, work is equal to zero because force is acting perpendicular to the surface. Using the equation Fs cos theta, we can understand this better. Question three, the orbital period T of a moon Orbiting a planet of mass m is given by r cubed over t square is equal to km, where r is the average distance between the center of the planet and the center of the moon. Show that k is equal to g over 4 pi square. Now, in a previous video, I derived Kepler's third law. Kepler's third law actually is t square is equal to 4 pi square r cubed over gm. And why is this important? because we can substitute the equivalent expression for t square and do some cancelling out to equate for what we need to find. But to use Kepler's third law, we first need to derive it. Now I've derived it in a previous video, but I'll derive it again for the purpose of answering this question. The basis of Kepler's third law is the centripetal force is equal to the gravitational force. Centripetal force is mass times the centripetal acceleration and gravitational force is given in your data booklet as G M M over R square. Now let's cancel out the M's. Centripetal force also equals to 4 pi square R over T square and that's equal to G M over R square. Now, if we cross multiply and just rearrange this equation to solve for t square, we get that t square 
is equal to 4 pi square r cubed over gm. Now we have an equivalent expression to substitute in. So why don't we do that? r cubed over 4 pi square r cubed over gm is equal to km. Now let's solve this complex fraction. So we get r cubed multiplied times gm over 4 pi square r cubed is equal to km. And if we don't see what I did, I just took the reciprocal as I'm doing division, cancel out the r cubes. I get that gm over 4 pi square is equal to km. But that's not what we want to prove. We want to prove that k is equal to g over 4 pi square m and m cancel hence k is equal to g over 4 pi square and we've proved the statement next question the following data for the mars phobos system and the earth moon system are available mass of the earth is 5.97 to 10 to the power of 24 the earth moon distance is 41 times the mars phobos distance the orbital period of the moon is 86 times the orbital period of phobos calculate in kg the mass of mars now i've done many previous questions like this but not in this exact context but what did we do every time we always divide two expressions to solve for the numerator which is what we want to find now, how do I translate that into this question? Well, we can use this statement that we had previously found. R cubed over T square is equal to Km. This can be giving our ma mass of Mars. So the mass of Mars, mass of Mars is equal to this statement, right? That R cubed over T square, R cubed over T t square times k right and the mass of earth we know already is 5.97 into 10 to the power of 24 what if we divide these two expressions and solve for what we need now what do i mean by this well we can say mm over me is equal to actually instead of me let's directly put our what we know 5.97 into 10 to the power of 24 is equal to this expression r cubed over t square k over we know the distance is 41 times the mass phobos distance so it's going to be 41 r whole cubed over the period is 86 times the orbital period of phobos so 86 t whole square and k of course is a constant so let's again solve this complex fraction we get r cubed over t square k times take the reciprocal which would be 86 square t square k i just distributed the squares over 41 cubed r cubed let's do some cancelling out t square k t square k r cubed r cubed so we know the mass of the mars over the mass of the earth which is 5.97 into 10 to the power of 24 is equal to 86 square over 41 cubed but we want to find the mass of the mars so let's multiply this right side times the mass of the earth to isolate the mass of the mars so mm is equal to let's put this on our calculators to get 86 square over 41 cubed is equal to 0 0.107 and this times are the mass of the earth which we got earlier 5.97 it was actually given in the question into 10 to the power of 24 we get the mass of the mars is equal to 6.4 into 10 to the power of 23 kilograms
And that's our answer. Whenever they're giving you some expression previously in the question, it's always good to look at the expression and see if it's useful in this question. In this case, we directly just use that to solve for the answer, and that just made the overall process easier. Next question, again, three marks. The graph shows the variation of gravitational potential between Earth and the Moon with the distance from the center of the Earth. The distance from the Earth is expressed as a fraction of the total distance between the center of the Earth and the center of the Moon. Okay, so what do they want us to find? Determine using the graph the mass of the Moon. Now, how do we do this? This is a gravitational potential distance graph. Now, why is this useful to know? In a previous video, if you recall, I said that the slope of a gravitational potential distance graph is always equal to the gravitational field strength. In this case, for this point in specific, we can say the tangent or the slope at this point is equal to zero. Slope is zero. What does this mean? At this distance, 0 0.9, the gravitational field strength is zero. So can't we equate the two gravitational field strengths, one due to the moon, one due to the earth, to each other because they're equal to each other at this point and then solve for what we need? What does this look like? So we know that G, the mass of the earth over the radius, in this case is 0 0.9 square is equal to zero. We also know that G mass of the moon over 0 0.1 whole square is equal to zero. As they're both equal to zero, we can simply just equate them to each other. So G mass of the earth over 0 0.9 square is equal to G mass of the moon over 0 0.1 square g and g cancel as their constants we want to solve for the mass of the moon so we know that mass of the earth times 0 0.1 over 0 0.9 whole square will give us our answer moon so let's put this on our calculator we already know the mass of the earth from the question it was given 5.97 into 10 to the power of 23 this times let's put this on our calculator 0 0.1 over 0 0.9 whole square is equal to 0 0.0123. So if we multiply our two things together, we get the mass of the moon of moon is equal to 7.37 times 10 to the power of 22 kilograms. Now this should actually be written right there. All this working should have been done in this box, but ignore that. This is still the same. That's the answer. Is there anything else? That's it. This is the last question. So I hope you can understand how all of this works and see you in the next video.